Hi everyone, my name is Matt, and I'm here with Steven Scotty, also known as Econova, and this is The Launchpad. You were part of something called Suspect Zero? Yeah, yeah. Um, that was a, so, uh, like a big room, progressive house duo kind of thing, yeah. So I just wanted to know a little bit of um, the transformation you took from Suspect Zero, which you mentioned was a duo, to just the solo Econova. Yeah, I just, uh, I guess I was just ready for a, a totally new sound. And I was starting to become a little, mm, what's the word? Just like a little bored of Big Room. Um, there's, there's a lot of good Big Room out there, but there's also a lot of bad Big Room kind of songs out there that are just, in my opinion, to my ear, a little too simple and repetitive just yeah. for my taste. So I started venturing into other genres and just kind of found myself in just wanting to be a solo act. Um, and there's things started to emerge from there. So it was a pretty slow, organic transition. So was there a direct inspiration to the sound and to the transformation into Econova? Um, that's, that's so interesting. I guess, I guess not. It was just from lots and lots and lots of trial and error, just on working with, with music. Like some of my first releases as Econova sound kind of clubby and, and fast and pretty different from what I'm working on now which I guess is inevitable with, with pretty much every artist out there. But for my stuff, I think you can, you can hear and detect a clear uh, evolution from like me not knowing exactly what I wanted to do to me like starting to find my thing. Um, but yeah, that process was really gradual, just relied on a lot of trial and error. Um, and then one day I made something and my manager said, I like that. I've never heard that sound before. You should, you should like ride that wave and and see where that takes you. I was like, okay, that's a cool idea. So I stuck with it per his advice. And I'm glad he said that. Um, yeah, because that, that basically laid the groundwork for how I would approach a new song. Now we can dive into the Epiphany EP. Yes, sir. Let's do it. Um, three songs. Um, it, like we mentioned earlier, it's got a lot of the um, kind of dance club sound to it. Um, is there a reason that's the sounds you went for on this EP or was that just something where you kind of created it, sounded really good and then you decide to roll with it? At the time that I wrote these tracks, I think I wrote I, these three specific songs, I think I wrote over maybe like a three or four month period about a year ago. And they at that time i was really into this specific sound epiphany was the last song i think that i finished um which is my personal favorite off of the ep um but at the time i was just i was really starting to experiment with some new takes on the sound that i had been using different methods of creating my sound and just trying to implement it into different environments that i hadn't before like epiphany is kind of like this grungy darkish kind of track but the airy sense in it keep it kind of uplifted mm -hmm. and then delusion is like very vocal driven which is new for me um my girlfriend did the vocals for that at that the vocal for that track was actually supposed to be on hit the gas which i released in february of this year but ended up making it its own song which is kind of a fun uh experimental process and then intentional is probably the most I guess like if you boil down my, my style that I have that, of the music that I've released so far, I think intentional embodies that, I guess the strongest. Um, but yeah, I just decided on these three just because at the time, these three tracks seemed to kind of epitomize what I was making in this era. So I like, like we mentioned earlier and um, I'll bring up again how a lot of them have that same kind of dance sound, but they're also very different. Like you brought up how um, Delusion has the vocal samples that line the song. And um, like, I know when listening to it, that there's, um, 
it, it builds on a lot of different percussion lines. Um, there's lasers and synths and all of it put together. Um, it creates it creates that vibe that you know you're in a club, you're dancing and all that, but they all just have this a, a certain specific feel to it. Like you said, yeah. one of them has that grungy, dark sound to it, but it's still uplifted at the same time. Yeah, right. I, I think the the common ground that the three tracks have is they're easy to dance to and it's easy just to kind of either sway to it or maybe even shuffle or kind of dance a little harder. I think all three tracks have that in common, which is something that I focus on when I'm working on music. Just just the the intuition and making it easy for people to dance to. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's fun that they all offer something a little different, but at their foundation, at their core, they're still like dance records. Now, when, when talking about uh, the whole writing and, you know, what you do to sit down and write these songs, whether it be inspired by an outside uh, source or whether it's something you just come up with and you roll with it, what is your writing, I guess the easiest way to put it is, what is your writing like? Like, do you sit down and do you write it all in one shot? Is it something that comes to you or... Do you spitball it first and then write it afterwards? Like, how does the process go for you? It's kind of different every time that I sit down to work on a track. Um, like, early, like two or three days ago, I, I made like four songs just off of my laptop speakers. And somehow they all came out in like one day, at least probably like 85% of a song, at least. And I tested her on my speaker and they sounded great. Well, it worked, but some days it's like that and others um, I'm really racking my brain just to trying to jumpstart some sort of creativity. Um, I guess the common denominator is starting with a chord progression, just something that has a really moving melodic component, I think really starts getting my, my inspiration flowing. Although lately, which is completely opposite from this, I've been starting tracks just from getting a drum groove written down. So whether it's inspiration just from life or just like trying to get some sort of interesting sound in the track, it, it's different every time. So there isn't really one answer. But my goal is even though that I start a song differently every time and like point A is always different, my point B, I try to always make the same-ish kind of uh, objective and goal. So rather than have the same starting point every time, your goal is just to finish off at the same spot. Yeah, exactly. So just something that sounds like a track by me is just the goal. I just, I, I make, I make it a priority to make sure that it sounds like an Echo Nova song, just because I really think like personally, I really like my style, I guess, as you should as an artist. So I just, I, I try to implement that. Like there's some songs that I write that don't quite sound like me and I'll end up after the fact trying to, incorporate some of my own sounds. So yeah, I always try to end at that point, but the starting point's always different. But yeah, I've just really, I mean, quarantine has been a blessing and a curse at the same time. I mean, it's awful what's going on for our industry and in other industries and just everyone as individuals, but I guess I've been, lately I've been really trying to find a silver lining and Lately, that's just been lots of inspiration, like I said, just from world events and been writing a lot of songs, just trying to pump, pump stuff out while I'm not traveling, while I'm not touring. So, I mean, I guess it's kind of a gift just to have all this time. And while that silver lining for you is writing this music and being able to produce it, for a lot of people, the silver lining is getting this music and listening to it. So I think yeah. that's a really special thing to come in this also. Definitely agree that like I understand why artists don't, wouldn't want to release music right now, um, whether that's just from personal decision or, or dealing with, with uh, a label schedule and stuff like that, but we need music right now. Yeah, so it's, it's definitely, I'm grateful for all the music that's been coming out over the last few months while we've all been, for the most part, locked up inside. Just because, like what you're saying, like the silver lining for, for most people is all this music coming out. So it's definitely important.
to take your mind off things and everything like that. And you said it best yourself where we need music right now. And uh, with that, um, that's all the time we have for this episode of The Launchpad. Um, we need music. And with people like Steven and everybody else releasing music right now, it is our silver lining. So first, I just have to say again, Steven Ekanova, thank you so much for joining me on this episode of The Lunch Bed. It's been a pleasure to get to know you um, and again, dive right into this EP. Yeah, man. Thank you. Thanks for your time. I appreciate it. Of course. As always, everybody, my name is Matt. That's Steven. And this was The Lunch Bed. Is this delusion? Is this delusion? Is this delusion?